Welcome to our next unit, the exploration and colonization of the New World. And today we're going to look at European exploration of the Americas. And we will also call this the Age of Exploration. So uh, take a look here at your front page. We have North America, Central America. We have this awesome picture of what Columbus may have looked like when he landed in the New World. Look at, they are just looking up and praising God and they are happy to be alive, as I'm sure many of you are today as we start this new unit. All right, Europe in the year 1000. Now, we are switching gears a little bit for time. We were looking at the Native Americans around 1500 to 1600. Now we're going to look across the ocean to the east in Europe and back about 500 years. So Europe in the year 1000. Europe was dominated by three nations, England, France, and Spain. And the Catholic Church, or in the big scheme of things, Christianity, the Catholic Church was run by the Pope from the city of Rome. It controlled the spiritual and religious life of Europeans. And European Christians looked to the Holy Land as the birthplace of Jesus Christ and the Christian religion. Still today, Christians believe that the Holy Land or Israel is where Jesus was born, and they see Jesus as the center of their religion. And the Catholic Church is still quite powerful, and it's not as powerful as it was um, 500 to 1,000 years ago, but it's still powerful, and uh, in the United States, nearly 70% of, of Americans identify themselves as Christians. So uh, with all the different kinds of Christianity out there, there are a lot of believers in Jesus. And uh, at, it, during 1000, B, or 1000 AD, the, most Christians were Catholics, and they were controlled by the Pope. So look at these nations here, and notice the cross. That means that all of these countries, the big players, they were Christian nations, and that united them. Okay, the Holy Land is the land known today as Israel or Palestine, and three different religions call it their Holy Land. So if there are three people claiming the same place, well, three groups of people, especially three religions, claiming the same place as their Holy Land, there's going to be some problems. But let's look at the background here. So the Jewish religion, or Judaism, claims Israel as its holy land because God promised it to Abraham and he um, led Moses and all of his people, the Israelites, into the land and gave it to them. And um, it's sacred to them because it's their land promised to them by God. The next religion, Christianity, <clears throat> it's based on the teachings of Jesus Christ, who was a Jew, but he was the main reason that Christians split from Judaism. They believed that Jesus is the Son of God or the Messiah. Christ was born, lived, and died, and was resurrected in Israel, so that's the holy land of the Christians because their number one person or, or deity that they follow is Jesus. Some symbols there that you have of Christianity, the cross. Here's a, a, an artist's depiction of Christ. Most likely he's not red-headed and fair-skinned because he was Jewish and lived in Israel. But... Um, it, Anyway, and also cathedrals, and this is a, a middle a, a Catholic church, well, cathedral, and you'll see those all over Europe. Finally, the third religion of is Islam, and the religion of Islam is based on the teachings of Muhammad, who they believe is a great prophet and holy man. He is actually the prophet of Islam, so the most important one. He lived and preached in and around Israel, and many places in Israel are holy to Muslims. So all three of these religions claim this land as the holy land. Now in 1095, the, uh, the, there was a, a huge crisis, and I'll just read through this, so read with me. In, in the year 1095, people were shocked in Western Europe by the words of Pope Urban II. The Muslims have conquered Jerusalem. So after the Muslims conquered Jerusalem, they forbade Christians to come to Jerusalem to pray and visit the holy sites. Pope Urban wanted the Christians to retake Jerusalem from the Muslims. People started to shout, God wills it. And that was their, basically their gathering cry. And all over Europe, these were the words of the Christians. 
Christians from all over Europe went on the Crusades. And the, the word crusade means a war of the cross. When the Crusaders came home, though, they brought goods and luxuries home from the Middle East, such as spices, silks, and foods, and Europeans liked these and wanted more. Now, we're not going to focus on the Crusades too much, just that the event happened, and, and there were many cru different Crusades over a couple of hundred years, but you need to know that the Crusades triggered the Age of Exploration. So the um, Muslims in the area of, in, in the Holy Land, they shut off the Holy Land to Christians. They prevented them from coming in. And so, of course, the Christians got angry about that. And the Pope was extremely powerful. He was the spiritual leader of millions of Christians. So he called out to all the kings of Europe. And then all the kings of Europe called down to their knights and their nobles. And they called their soldiers up. And they went on this crusade uh, all the way to the Holy Land. Dangerous journey, dangerous, awful fighting that happened. Um, but that you don't need to know so much about. Just know that it happened and what a crusade is. So here you see that where these people, the Europeans, the Christians came from, Europe, all through Italy, and they went over land here through Constantinople, Adrianople, all through Turkey, this awful desert area, to Jerusalem, where they fought, and many, many, many died. So a crusade is a Christian holy war, and a jihad, as you've heard that a lot recently, is a Muslim holy war. And we won't get too deep into it. We could discuss this for a lifetime and argue and but you're here to just worry about the next part. All right, so Europeans wanted goods from the Middle East. Take a look at all of these different goods. These are goods that are found in the Middle East and in new areas that these Europeans had never been to. Um, the, Euro the merchants in the Middle East, Muslim merchants, they, for a while, they worked with the European nations. They traded goods. They allowed them access to these new markets. But after the Crusades, the Muslim merchants started to charge a lot. And sometimes they wouldn't even deal with European and Christian um, merchants. So European kings and queens, they wanted to find faster and cheaper ways to get goods from India and China. And they began to send explorers out. And they would say, hey, let's go. We need to find some... We need to find cheaper ways to get these goods. We need to find faster ways to get these goods. We must get these goods to our people and for ourselves because we want them. Now take a look. These are the trade routes after the Crusades. So here's our focus here in Europe. All of these Christian nations, they used to use all of these different trade routes. The Muslims would... Uh, Muslim traders would get the goods and bring them to European traders, and it, everything was fine. But as you can see, after the Crusaders, after the Crusades end, European merchants counted on Muslim merchants to go to India and China and bring back these goods. But those networks started to dry up; they started to go away, and they were they just took a long time. Um, the, basically the European countries wanted to cut out the middleman. They wanted to cut out all of these people, these Muslims and Chinese and Asian um, traders that were taking part of the profit. They were, you know, they wouldn't be able to bring enough goods to the European markets. So, moving forward, the first attempt first recorded attempt of a European trying to get to Asia, to these Asian markets on his own, and find new trade routes is Marco Polo. Uh, as you can see here in this bottom paragraph, Marco Polo was an Italian merchant. He traveled to the east and then back with a load of goods. The round trip of Marco Polo took three years. So that's not very... Um, useful really. It just takes way too long to bring back any kind of fresh goods like oranges or um, anything that might go bad. It was uh, way too dangerous. 
and he brought back way few, too few goods. There had to be a better way to get there and to carry more products. See, this guy, I mean, he, he's, he's tough. He walked a, a long way, all the way across the Gobi Desert. I cannot believe he went so far. Then he took a boat back and then over land again. But uh, there had to be a better way. And we're going to focus on that better way coming up here in the next few videos.